What are youth commit status offenses? That, the answer to that question is, is long and complicated um, for the same reason that uh, youth make sometimes bad decisions as they're growing. Oftentimes there's been a history of family domestic violence. There's been a history of abuse or neglect on this child. Um, this uh, particular child may not have the ability to control behaviors. They've been traumatized by what's happened to them in the past. Often, many of our children um, are lost at school, uh, educationally and socially. They may be bullied. We know kids that have been exposed to abuse and neglect, have witnessed domestic violence and other interpersonal violence, have difficulty often learning. It changes the way their brain works. And so uh, many times they fall behind in class and become uh, sad and, and unable to have any hope about the future. What we do know about status offenders is that they need community support, family support, therapeutic support, educational support. That punishing children who live punishing lives results in nothing positive. Uh, putting kids in detention with other children that may have committed serious murder, rape, other offenses, uh, really only serves to teach the status offender uh, and teach them and, and introduce them to new friends. Uh, friends that have skills that we really don't want to share with our status offenders. One of the approaches on both a local and national level that seems to work is having judges intervene pre-petition, pre-engaging the child in the court system. Um, partnering with schools, uh, identifying community partners that can help the child and the family as well identify and address what the barriers are to school success. We find that when judges go to school in intervention, uh, diversion type programs, um, it causes um, all the community collaborative partners to come around this child. We get engagement by the parents because what we do understand is that school attendance truancy issues really are a family issue. And it's not only just one child, it could be uh, a number of children in the home. Our goal is to support the parents, teach them about the importance of education, um, help them be successful um, in the community from a job perspective and, a, and an academic perspective, and then engage the children, identify their strengths, find out what they're good at, um, reach down and try to make school a positive place for the child. In the meantime, providing academic supports and also providing therapeutic supports for families. In Louisville, Kentucky, our juvenile detention facility does not accept status offenders. We've developed many model programs, not just in Louisville, but around the state, uh, built on this concept of early intervention, identifying uh, students that are at risk early on, bringing in services into the school for the family and the children. We try to provide as many community resources as we can before the child is even involved in the court system. If they must go to the court system, we layer on more services. The goal, again, is not to be punitive, but to be strength-based. Identify what a child needs, what a family needs. Is this really a family in need of services? Do we need to wrap around um, the counseling services? Does this family need in-home counseling services? Do they need help um, obtaining medical cards? food, what really are the everyday barriers to that child and that family being successful academically. The national standards put into words what forward-thinking judges have known for many, many, many years, that the court system is no place for status offenders, that the outcomes aren't good, and that it really sends a message to children uh, that they don't deserve better from the community than they're getting. I think putting these uh, standards in writing pushes court systems and communities ahead to think about better ways to address status offenders. 
But the truth of the matter is that judges are constitutional officers, so we can't just stop with these written standards. We have to move ahead and change our legislation. We have to work with our, um, our states, uh, legislators, to modify their, our authority as judicial officers uh, to do exactly what we've been doing that hasn't been helpful. Many family court judges and other juvenile judges around the country really believe that children can be successful. These standards will be key in helping us complete our commitment to those children.